On today's show, a big fight is brewing between California and the Trump administration, and it's all over emissions. Car sales in Europe reach a nine-year high, and how car interiors can be reconfigured for autonomous driving. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Uh Uh-oh, this could turn into a battle royale. The California Air Resources Board says if the Trump administration substantially changes the mandate for electric vehicles, it may no longer coordinate its activities with the Environmental Protection Agency. The CARB says it will move to aggressively increase its mandate for zero emission vehicles after 2025. It also says that automakers should not get more ZEV credits for selling plug-in hybrids since they use internal combustion engines. The incoming Trump administration is nominating Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt to become the next EPA administrator. Both he and Trump say they want to ease up on environmental regulations. This sure looks like it's headed towards a major fight between California and the federal government. And you know, automakers do not want to see two different sets of regulations, one for California and another for the EPA. But while the U.S. may end up backing off electric cars, the rest of the world is not. Volkswagen delivered nearly 4 million vehicles in China last year, making it the biggest foreign automaker in the country, and it's continuing its push to grow. Not only will VW invest $4.3 billion in its joint ventures with SAIC and FAW, but it's adding another JV to its list. It's teaming up with JAC to produce electric cars and hopes to have the first vehicles rolling off the assembly lines by 2018. You know, China is rolling back its government tax incentives on cars with small engines. At the same time, it's really pushing incentives to sell more electrics. And Volkswagen is not the only automaker focusing on EVs. Ford's executive chairman, Bill Ford, says he sees a big shift towards electric vehicles coming as global demand continues to increase. The company believes EVs will outsell gasoline-powered vehicles globally within the next 15 years. So Ford is going to invest $4.5 billion to beef up its EV and hybrid vehicle lineup. Over the next five years, we'll see the company roll out 13 electrified vehicles, which will account for 40% of its lineup. That's up from 13% in 2015. We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. We talked a lot about electrified vehicles in the first half of the show. But for all of you who still want a thunderous V8 with heart-stopping horsepower lurking under the hood, have no fear. Dodge's new Challenger Demon will be out soon. We're learning a little more about the car. Changes have been made to the wheels, steering, suspension, brakes, and interior, which drops the weight by more than 200 pounds compared to the current Hellcat. You know, Dodge will continue to release little tidbits like this about the Demon, as it leads up to its debut at the New York Auto Show in April. You know, if you own a classic muscle car and want to put a scent of vintage tires to give you just that right look, you're now in luck. Coker Tires is reproducing Firestone wide ovals for classic muscle cars. And while they look like the original bias ply versions, they're actually radial tires. The new wide ovals retail for about $200 per tire, depending on the size, and will be available later this month. Last year, automakers in the U.S. sold a record 17.5 million passenger vehicles. But the U.S. isn't the only region where sales are strong. European car sales reached a nine-year high in 2016, hitting 15.1 million units, which is a gain of 6.5%. Volkswagen still is the market leader in the region, but it lost share due to its diesel scandal. Renault and FCA posted the largest gains in 2016. And thanks to strong sales in the U.S. and Europe, a new report from Bank of America Merrill Lynch shows that the global SAR 
topped 100 million units for the first time in December. Hey, coming up next, a look at how the interiors of cars could be reconfigured for autonomous driving. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. Hey, don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours today. We'll be down at the Detroit Auto Show talking about the best and worst of the show, along with some interesting guests who join John and Gary. Yang Feng is the name of the Chinese supplier that bought up the automotive interior operations of Johnson Controls. It's showing off its vision of how the interiors of cars could be reconfigured in four different ways when driving autonomously. First off is the drive mode, which is how most cars are configured today. Once the car is driving autonomously, the interior can change to family mode, where the rear console moves forward and the front seats rotate slightly towards each other so the occupants can talk more easily. The rear bucket seats also move outboard from each other as well. Then in meeting mode, the front seats move all the way to the rear of the interior while the rear seats fold out of the way. Or the front passenger seat can move forward, then turn completely around so the passengers face each other. And finally, in lounge mode, both front seats move completely to the rear, providing lots of room to spread out and relax. You know, these are pretty clever ideas and show how the car could be configured to meet different consumer tastes. And that could be also very helpful to ride sharing services. You know, we love showing you the ideas that suppliers are showing to automakers. It gives you an inside peek of what will hit the market in the near future. But with that, we wrap up today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you here tomorrow.